Uh, we're going to get started with the joint section and looking at the things that happen and, and can be avoided in uh, joint arthroplasty surgery. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, Dr. Steven Encavo. Dr. Encavo is one of our hip and knee guys over here at Methodist Hospital. <clears throat> he did his residency and fellowship in Vermont, and he joined us a couple years ago and is trying to tackle all these complicated fractures. So I'll leave you guys with Dr. Encavo, who's going to moderate the section. Thanks for coming out this morning. Um, let's just get right into the, uh, into the talk. Now, this is entitled Hip Replacement After Proximal Femoral Fracture, and that's a topic I think that goes across the breadth of orthopedics. Uh, here are my disclosures. They're also in the, um, in the uh, syllabus. So what I'd like to talk about today is uh, arthroplasty after intertroch hip fractures, after femoral neck fractures, uh, a little bit about the painful hemiarthroplasty, and also uh, mention arthroplasty for intertroch fractures. So um, by way of introduction, why do we operate on uh, hip fractures? Well, they fail, and they fail because most commonly you have fracture non-union and failed fixation. So we'll uh, save the questions till the end. Uh, Glenn Landon is next, Dr. Landon. Uh, this is Kelsey Siebold, uh, one of my colleagues, and Glenn and I um, enjoy uh, sharing cases and talking about uh, difficult problems, so Glenn. Thank you. Good morning. I'd like to talk with you this morning about uh, a difficult and un increasingly uh, prevalent problem that we're, we face, and that's fractures around the joints that we've put in. So um, why are we seeing more of this? Well, uh, it's because for those of us who have been practicing for three decades, we've put in a lot of joints, and uh, we get these calls. Uh, do you remember my grandmother? You put a total hip on her 25 years ago, and now she's in the nursing home and fell. Okay, uh, male rotation issues. This is a big topic, an increasing topic, one that's um, sort of near and dear to my heart. I think um, you know, we've had this um, ongoing discussion about knee replacements aren't as good as hip replacements. There are some patients who are dissatisfied with their knee replacements, and I think this is not the whole answer, but it's part of the answer uh, to why that occurs. Okay, so um, the questions we're going to address, what's the instance of male rotation and painful knee replacements? What are the signs and symptoms? Sports medicine complications section, and we've got uh, several good talks um, arranged. Good. So the first uh, talk uh, is going to be on uh, ACL surgery, and compared to Dr. Dixon's talk, which was NC17 with body parts, lying around. This one will be PG, sports medicine. The next talk um, is going to be by uh, Dr. David Littner. Um, he's a uh, associate professor um, from Cornell, uh, based out of Methodist uh, Hospital. He's also the head team physician for the Houston Astros and one of the team physicians for the Texans. Um, and he's going to be talking about complications in shoulder arthroscopy. All right, thank you. Thank you, Pat. It's, there's nothing like being asked by a uh, one of your partners to give a talk on complications in shoulder arthroscopy, it makes you wonder, why does he want me to give that talk? Uh, but uh, I hope it's just because I've gotten to watch a lot of cases over the years. Um, if you cut enough, you know you're going to cry. And at some point, uh, something bad's going to happen. But you have to know that you've done the right thing uh, at the end of uh, each and every day. Dr. Jeffrey Budoff, give our first lecture today. Good afternoon. We're talking about hand lacerations. A lot of this you know in general. You want to check the tetanus status, make sure it's up to date. Oral antibiotics uh, probably in an evidence-based world don't do much, but the patients like them and it's good for their peace of mind. You never have to explain why you didn't give them. Obviously, you want to irrigate the wound. If you see it acutely, you probably want to close it, but you want to close it very loosely. Uh, our next speaker for the hand section is... Uh came back to visit, he did his training here in Houston, and uh, again, another caveat, he actually did his hand fellowship with, amongst others, Chris Allen, who was my co-fellow when I was here in Houston, in, up in Seattle. So without further ado, Lee Reichel for Mr. Uh, I work at Ben Tobb General Hospital, uh, a little plug for Ben Tobb. We do about 2,000 cases a year. We have uh, five orthopedic surgeons and two full-time hand surgeons. Uh, I'd like to start out with just a couple of uh, quick case presentations that we'll uh, follow up with at the end of the talk.